Hello everybody, welcome back to History 1301. That's dual credit history. So in this lecture, I'm gonna to talk to you about the ideals that are found in the Declaration of Independence. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we should look at is the definition of what an ideal is. So according to the definition I have here, an ideal is a standard or a goal that represents something close to perfection. So I use this analogy of the finish line to kind of visualize what an ideal is. So imagine you're in a race and you see the finish line and you're running and you're running, but every time you get close to the finish line, it just moves a little bit further away from you. That's kind of like when a, what an ideal is. It's a goal that you kind of set for yourself so that you can be better than you were before. Uh, so we don't really ever reach an ideal. We don't ever reach that goal but it does improve us as we're striving to reach that goal. So that's the definition. In the Declaration of Independence, there are five ideals enumerated in the first two sentences of the Declaration. So Thomas Jefferson included these on purpose because I believe that he was trying to make goals for what the country would be like once it was independent from Great Britain. So here are the five goals. Equality, rights, opportunity, democracy, and liberty. These are the five ideals found in the Declaration of Independence. So what we're gonna do next here is we're gonna get into each one and we're gonna analyze how it was defined in 1776 and how it is debated today. Okay, so let's start with the first one, equality. So you've probably heard about this term before and you've probably heard that statement from the Declaration that says all men are created equal. So at the time that Thomas Jefferson wrote this, in 1776, not everybody was equal. In fact, inequality was probably the most common scenario or the most common case around the world. Most people were unequal, whether they were unequal because of social status or whether they were unequal because of gender. There was inequality in many places around the world. So when he wrote those words in the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson had that in mind. He had in mind that most societies were unequal. And so he wanted to differentiate the United States from those other societies. Now he already understood and he already accepted that most colonists being white and being property owners and being men, well, they already enjoyed some kind of equality. But even within that group, there was unequal status because the more land, the more power, uh, usually the more status you had as, as a male. Uh, but this didn't include anybody who was enslaved. So one question that even framers back then were asking themselves is, what about enslaved people? Are they included in this? And what about women? Are they gonna ever be included in this new nation? So that's equality in 1776. So let's look at equality now and see how it's debated today. So today, even though slavery has been abolished since 1865, and even though women have had the right to vote since 1920, some people still argue that things are not as equal as they should be. And whether they argue that it's inequality in the economy, inequality in politics, or inequality in society, a lot of people still believe that equality is kind of a goal that just keeps moving away from us, that it doesn't seem to be something we've met yet. Um, but I guess the question that you should ask yourself after you read this is, can we really be equal? Is that a goal that we can reach together as, as people, and especially together as a nation, as the United States. And how can we achieve that equality? Is it up to us? Is it up to the government to ensure that we're equal? Those are questions that Americans still debate about today. Rights is the next ideal we're gonna discuss here. And rights at the time that Thomas Jefferson wrote this document uh, belonged basically to every Englishman. So every person who was from the British Empire enjoyed the same kinds of rights. But Thomas Jefferson thought about this a little bit differently. He looked at what John Locke had written about natural rights or rights that are fundamental to every human being. And he kind of took it a step further. John, Thomas Jefferson thought about the fact that these rights kind of transcended people that were from the British Empire. In other words, they were rights that could not be taken away because they were born into you once you were born into the world. And so he kind of thought about these in a different way. He thought about them as unalienable rights. Um, so rights that cannot be taken away from any person by any government. And Thomas Jefferson, when he put this into action in 1776, he knew that he was pushing the limits a little bit um, because he was trying to persuade the readers of the declaration that no government should ever be able to take these rights from people. 
uh, and it's kind of a direct jab at King George because uh, as you can imagine for a year the war has been going on and so these people are trying to say that the government of England has been stripping these rights away from from free men from people that lived in the colonies now today rights are a little bit different um, in in the sense that Americans still debate whether we all enjoy full rights as Americans um, so the Constitution enumerates our rights under the Bill of Rights the first 10 amendments to the Constitution and there's been 17 amendments after that and so what the government of the United States tries to do is tries to intervene at times in order to protect the rights of some groups especially minorities and in order to preserve the rights of the majority which is basically those first 10 bills those for the first 10 amendments excuse me the Bill of Rights but Americans today still debate who decides who should get more rights and who decides how many rights are enumerated in the Constitution uh, because Americans are weary of giving the government too much power many Americans believe that if the government has too much control over the lives of people then it's going to take advantage and other Americans think it's completely the duty of the government to protect people's rights and so that debate still goes on today now if we look at liberty which is the next ideal here liberty is a bit similar because when Thomas Jefferson wrote this into the Declaration of Independence most Americans at the time most colonists at the time thought of freedom in a very unique way so they all kind of had different perceptions of what liberty was and liberty by the way is a synonym of freedom and so for many colonists at the time being free meant that you could for example be free to practice whatever religion you you wanted or be free from taxation without representation or even to be free to live the way you wanted to live or to be married whenever you wanted to be married um, so those kinds of liberties or freedoms were defined very broadly for a lot of people but one way that a lot of people actually uh, agreed upon the definition of freedom was that the opposite of freedom was slavery and so I don't want you to think that colonists thought of themselves as being slaves or anything like that but many of them equated being controlled by the British Empire as being a slave to the British Empire and so for a lot of them that's what they defined as liberty the opposite of slavery and um, I don't think a lot of them actually stopped to think about enslaved people so I think that a lot of them actually kind of ignored that group of the population which at the time was a fifth of the population of the colonies and I don't think a lot of them actually thought of liberty applying to people that were enslaved. Liberty today is a little bit different because uh, most people today, many people you would agree, uh, cherish the freedom of choice. So the freedom to live wherever you want to live, the freedom to marry whoever you want to marry, the freedom to have choices. That's what a lot of Americans cherish today. Now, we all know that freedom isn't unlimited. Freedom is not absolute, in other words. Uh, but we always debate who gets to decide the limits of our freedom. Uh, should the government have some kind of cap on things that relate to our choices? Uh, so a lot of Americans think that the government should always intervene and, and help you, kind of guide you in your quest to find your freedom. But other people think that the government should have no say in whatever you want. Uh, so that's one big debate there. Um, and we're surely not free to do anything we want, but should we be free to do anything we want? That's a question that a lot of Americans still debate today. Opportunities is the next ideal we're going to discuss here. And when Thomas Jefferson wrote this in 1776, he thought of opportunity as a symbol of what America was, because for a lot of colonists that arrived in those uh, times to America, America was already a land of opportunity and especially the big difference was that America had a lot of land and land was something that was very scarce or very short in England so a lot of people that left England to come to the Americas found that getting land was a way to form a new life a new kind of path in your destiny and so for a lot of Americans that was a big opportunity at the time now when uh, Thomas Jefferson wrote this in 1776 a lot of Americans believe the way he did. He pushed the limit a little bit more because when he took what John Locke said about life, liberty, and property as being rights that every Englishman should have, 
Well, he took it a little step further and he included the pursuit of happiness instead of property. And so he kind of left it open. So whatever you wanted or whatever you needed to make you happy in this new world, in this new continent, was there for you. And so for him, this was a very important thing to him input in that Declaration of Independence. And so for Americans signing this declaration and for Americans reading it afterwards, this was a symbol that this was going to be a land where you would be free to choose and free to form your own path or free to forge your own destiny. So that's how it was defined in 1776. Now, opportunity today is very similar because a lot of Americans that a lot of people, I'm sorry, that migrate from other parts of the world still come searching for that economic opportunity in the United States. And so when a lot of Americans uh, start to think about those immigrants, a lot of them start to have debates about the role of immigrants in our life, especially because some Americans really wonder if this is actually a land of opportunity for everybody. I mean, it, it's very easy to see that a lot of immigrants do succeed, but there's also a large part of Im immigrants that, that find it very difficult to succeed in the United States. Um, and so for a lot of Americans today, there's that debate about whether the U.S. should be helping immigrants or should be stopping immigrants. Opportunity is interpreted differently on those two sides of the debate. And then finally, what a lot of Americans think is, is intervening actually enough? Like, are we doing enough to help people find that opportunity in America? And so some people believe that there should be no intervention and that America should give opportunity to Americans, not to immigrants. And so that's the debate that is here today about opportunity. Democracy is the last ideal that I'm gonna to talk to you about. And when Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence, he understood that a lot of people already had experience with democracy in the colonies. Um, in fact, he wanted to convey to people that the way that they were running their government in the colonies was already a different kind of government, a government that hadn't existed before, a government where power rested with the people, a government where consent was in the people. And so whenever they consented to be governed by a group of people, that was a democracy. And he knew that this was different, that, the, that nothing like this had existed before. Because sure, there had been direct democracies in Greece, but this was not like that. This was a different kind of ideal, a different kind of democracy. Like I said, many colonists had already had experience with this because they participated in their local governments. They voted, they held positions as assemblymen or, or uh, leaders in their communities. And so a lot of them already understood this way of governing, but some of them actually doubted that this was gonna work if the country kept growing. So some of them actually thought that uniting the country and being a country that was thousands of miles long was actually gonna be hurting their ability to have an effective government. And they doubted that it was gonna work at such a large scale. And some of them actually thought ahead a little bit and thought about women and thought about minorities and thought about all those enslaved people. And they actually wondered whether they would be included effectively in this new kind of democracy. So that's how this was defined in 1776. Today, democracy, democracy has changed a bit because Democracy now includes African Americans who were given the right to vote in 1865. It also includes women who were also given the right to vote in 1920. But despite those struggles and despite those hardships that those two groups of people had to go through, a lot of people today don't vote. A lot of people choose to forego completely voting because of many reasons. Some of them feel like their vote doesn't count. Some of them feel like voting is a waste of time. So what a lot of Americans think about today is is democracy gonna survive if people stop voting? Is democracy gonna move forward if people don't voice their opinions? So that's a very important debate, even more so today that we live in this very difficult time period. A lot of people are starting to wonder about that. Uh, but this end of this section does present that question to you about why do people not vote? If they've had the opportunity and if they've had to endure so much pain and suffering, why do they choose not to vote? So that's a big debate today. In this final section, I'm gonna offer you a reflection on these ideals. So we're gonna look at two pieces of evidence here. We're gonna look at uh, a quote and we're gonna be looking at a piece of art or a seal.
The first piece of evidence that I'm going to present to you here is a quote from a German-American politician. His name was Carl Schurz. And Schurz said these words about ideals, and I think they're perfect for what we're trying to learn about right now, these ideals in the Declaration of Independence. So these are his words. Ideals are like stars. You will not succeed in touching them with your hands. But like the seafaring man on the ocean, desert of waters, you choose them as your guides, and following them, you reach your destiny. For me, this quote represents very concisely, very completely what we were just talking about, what I was just discussing with you about these ideals, that their their aspirations, their goals that we should keep on trying to reach in order to be better, if, if not to be perfect, but at least to be better. So to me, that's just what Carl Schurz was trying to convey with this quote, but what do you think? And then the final thing that I'm gonna to present to you here is the seal of the United States. So this is the symbol that was commissioned after the Declaration of Independence was signed. And it, it was supposed to encompass or it was supposed to represent what America was. So on the left here, you see the eagle. Many of us know the symbol already, but very few of us have looked at this pyramid here. And I know what some of you are thinking, Illuminati, right? But put that thought aside for a moment. I just want you to focus on the fact that this is an unfinished pyramid. For a lot of Americans that have seen the symbol, it represents the fact that America is a work in progress, that America is, is on a mission to be better, to be more complete, to improve, to be a nation that protects all, to be a nation that is better for everybody, to be that giant beacon of freedom that a lot of people want it to be. Uh, but just like this pyramid is not finished, uh, our work is never done. So we should always try to improve and we should always try to reach that, those goals, those ideals set forth by, by Thomas Jefferson. I think it's a very worthy and a very aspirational goal to have um, because we all live in this country and we all want it to be better and we all want it to be good for everybody. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope it helped you understand the readings a lot better. I hope it helped you gain more clarity uh, in what these ideals mean.